Hey everyone, it has been so long since I've done a garden video when the chickens behind me um, But I had a few seconds before our first work meeting of the morning and I wanted to update everybody on our garden How are your gardens doing more importantly? <laughs> um, I know several of you have sent me pictures and videos of your gardens or questions in the beginning of the season so I would love some garden updates from you guys makes my day and Dave this video is for you because it's taken me so long to do it um, so I do apologize for taking uh, so long I know some people like to see what's going on in the garden um, and with the chickens um, we actually are in the middle of doing IVF so it has been a very time-consuming process for us um, we also are, as of February, we were in our location for our third karate school, so a lot more time is being spent doing stuff with that. And also, um, our son just graduated from high school, so, and it was a little bit um, of a close call with some of his assignments at the end there, and it just was a, we had a lot on our plate. So, the garden has been being worked on though I just haven't been able to do videos and edit them and all that fun stuff not that I edit them very much um, so as you can see behind me we did put in a really huge new fence it is very tall um, and the reason for it is to keep the chickens out and deer um, we do occasionally get deer in the yard because they can hop right over our side fence because it's too short um, but mostly it's to keep the chickens out who are we kidding um, so we can take a look here. We still have to put a gate on right now. It's just like a temporary fence and we still have to finish the white rocks around the perimeter, but we are happy with, with it. It does look crazy. Our family asked if we were doing Cirque du Soleil in our yard because it looks like some sort of cage, maybe like a cage match, like, you know, um, ultimate fighting type of situation that could happen in there because it's really, really tall because our yard slants so and it goes right to the road. So we kind of look crazy. Whatever, it's all for the garden, so it's okay. All right, so um, another update real quick with the chickens. We have some sick chickens right now. Um, it's like the universe was like, oh, you haven't had a predator claim one of your chickens in over a year? How about you just get every chicken illness under the sun? Uh, we don't know what's happening. Maybe it had something to do with the really cold winter and they just were cooped up more because they just couldn't get out. Um, literally, they, we had a foot of snow on the ground for over a month. Um, I don't know. They have scaly leg mites, so that involves Seth and I going into the coop in the middle of the night or, you know, late at night and vaselining their feet and then trying to prevent them from sliding all over the place. Um, it in they also we had one chicken that we had to put down my stepdad actually did that for us because Seth and I had been nursing her back to health I mean she was in a crate with a sling for probably a month and I just couldn't I didn't want either of us to do it for my own reasons so my stepdad stepped in and did that for us it was just so sad she just started off with her leg not working and then we determined she had roundworms and coccidia, um, possibly. So we tried medicating her. We did take her to the vet. That was expensive. Um, and she wound up just her quality of life dwindled so badly that we had to put her down. Now, right now, I have another sick chicken. Uh, it's not the same thing, but it very well could be the coccidia. So we just medicated all of the girls uh, while we're medicating them with their water for coccidia. Um, we did also medicate all of them for roundworms twice, uh, June 1st and June 15th. So it's been crazy. We have an egg withdrawal right now for the roundworm medicine. The coccidia medication does not require an egg withdrawal. So, oh, it's been crazy. Most of them are perfectly healthy walking around, even with some illnesses going on, um, like this girl. But just my my little all white girl is up in a crate right now just on the porch I have the door open she's just sleeping something's up with her so we'll see all right let's take a look in the garden before I talk to you forever so I did harvest some beets last night for dinner so the chickens are enjoying the beet greens right beardy <laughs> so yeah this is our very rough temporary fence or gate but I mean this gate is like 10 feet tall <laughs> 
it's a little much. All right, now I have to close this behind me, otherwise I get chickens in here. Even if I just do that, Ted can still get in. So let's start, yeah, not Teddy proof. Let's start, um, I guess over here. So first thing, I have some of these um, little flowers. They're called, I believe, borage. Um, they're very, when this bee is just going to town, they're very beautiful, like uh, iridescent purpley color. The plants themselves look really kind of ugly. Um, I accidentally planted them. I wanted to plant borage, but I thought I was planting a zucchini hybrid and these came up and I had no idea what they were for weeks. Um, but they, I'm leaving them because obviously the um, pollinators love them. Right, little guy? I'm sorry, I'm bothering you. So on this trellis, we did add a trellis this year. So on this first trellis, on the left side, I have sugar snap peas, which we've been harvesting for a few weeks now. Um, and they have these crazy tendrils and these very yummy seed pods. So I have some, most of them are purple, but I did get a random green one in there as well. So um, sugar snap peas, delicious. They will peter out though, now that it's getting too hot. Um, notice I am in a sweatshirt. I don't know if you noticed that because the last two nights it got down into the fifties. So it is the end of June. That's unusual, but it, we did have some hot stretches in there and they don't really like the heat too much. Neither does this kale, which is weird that I'm keeping it covered with a frost cloth. There's a ton of kale. I mean, hundreds of points. <laughs> um, but I have to keep it covered to protect it from the, if you guys remember, my kale last year got like ravaged by cabbage worms, cabbage loopers. So I keep the moths, the white moths that you guys see flying around, those are cabbage moths. I keep them out by this frost fabric and it has done a really good job. Um, okay, then on this side, I also do have some green beans. Now, this is the second year of growing these and they are marketed as pole beans, but they don't really grow very well up the pole. Ew, pincher bug. Um, so I don't know if they are actually pole beans or what. So um, they, they act more like push, bush beans. We also have a ton of different types of lettuce. This one's kind of getting to be where it's probably gonna bolt soon because it's getting a long stalk. Um, these ones are starting to head up. That's still cool though, that's great. They're delicious, really, really yummy. Lettuce, not as much as last year. Wasn't as successful growing it. I have marigolds planted all throughout because they're a good companion crop and they keep away some of the pests, um, supposedly. And lots of weeds in here. I have parsley. I planted parsley. I don't really use a ton of fresh parsley, honestly, um, but monarch or a swallowtail butterfly caterpillars love it and I'm trying to attract some good pollinators so that is why I really planted the parsley. Here is our beet patch. Um, I have been harvesting a little bit so what I'll do I, I plant them in um, sections of three so let me see if I can get in here and show you what I mean. So like here three or four so last night I harvested this big one because it's gonna give these smaller ones some time, some room to grow. So like I'll go into the middle of each patch and pick the biggest one and then that gives room for the other ones to grow. And they are delicious and this is a large weed. So I did straw this year for my um, mulch and I do like it because it's a lot easier to work with than the um, wood mulch, but I think I'm definitely getting more weeds. Um, okay, over here we have potatoes and a very large volunteer tomato in the back, but these are all potatoes and they're pretty big. Um, they are starting to flower. I just took potatoes that kind of grew eyes in the pantry and I cut them up. Uh, each section had, a, had an eye. I let them heal on the counter for a few days and then I planted them in and we've got a ton of potato plants. So we're gonna get a nice little harvest from this. They will flower, so potatoes do get a flower, but the fruit is inedible, do not eat it, it's actually poisonous. So you just eat the root, uh, you don't eat the actual plant or, or fruit. Um, 
and it's actually crowding out my squash a little bit. So we had a major, here's this huge tomato, I'm gonna have to prune that guy back, volunteer. Um, we had a big problem this year with cucumber bugs and squash, yeah, cucumber bugs, and I do have squash beetles already. So we barely have any cucumbers at all. And my squash took forever to establish and it was really stunted in the beginning because of these cucumber beetles. It was ridiculous. We tried these like yellow um, sticky traps. You can see there's a bunch of nasty bugs on there. Um, we tried a bunch of things, spray. I did like a soapy water solution. They just were ri ridiculous. There was so many of them. So I'm actually gonna try and trellis this guy um, so that I can get him off the ground and give him more room to grow. Um, then we have this patch, which is insane. Look at these flowers. I don't know if you can tell how big they are. These are actually carrot flowers. I planted these. I mean, these are like softball sized arrangements of flowers. That one's huge. Um, I planted these, look at that, <laughs> literally a softball. May, actually, that's way larger than a softball. Um, I planted them in the fall and just let them overwinter and then I pulled some of them up in the beginning and I was like, well, it's not even worth it to pull them because they're, they're not big carrots. I don't do well growing carrots, honestly. Um, and I'm like, well, I'm just going to leave them in there because the pollinators love the flowers and they're gorgeous and I love them. So there we go. So good way to get some flowers early um, to, to uh, plant cucumber, or I'm um, sorry, carrots in the fall. This is another flower that I have no clue what it is. <laughs> it looks like some sort of daisy, um, but they just came up out of nowhere. They're huge, like little, I thought at first it was chamomile because it looks like a chamomile type of st um, leaf arrangement, but it's not. Don't know what it is. Anybody have any idea? But it's pretty and I have to put it in this cage. We had to like assemble a cage because it was just taking over. It's the story of my life here. Um, we have some sort of either fig or blackberry. I had planted it, thought it died because the chickens got in there, it was just a stem, and it's grown back. So it's either, hi Ted, <laughs> it's either a fig or blackberries. We have both of them growing. Here's more of these green beans. They act like bush beans, but they are pole beans. You can see some actual beans here. So they are growing. Um, I had some cucumbers in here for my brother-in-law, but they got eaten by the cucumber beetles. Teddy, are you trying to get a potato? What are you doing, pup? I don't know what he's doing. Got to watch him. All right. We do have a purple basil. We've got a few of them growing, but they're growing very slowly. And here is the first tomato trellis um, on this side. It is, these tomatoes grew so quick. We were away for five days last week and I came back and I was like, oh my God, I had to prune a ton. This is, the ground is covered in clippings. Teddy, what are you looking for in there, Pop? So um, I did not, during while we were away and right before I did not come out here and cl clip enough of the suckers off. So it is definitely a little bit out of control. All different types of tomatoes here. And I, this year I'm trying this new type of tie. It's like twisty ties that you cut to the size you need. So far so good, I am happy with them. So we'll see if they hold up because I ran out of my old t-shirts. Um, now this right here is what happens when you don't get control of suckers. You have one jump from one trellis all the way to the next. And I just tied it to the second trellis. This is our new trellis. So now we have four. And the tomatoes on here are not looking as healthy as the ones right next door. They're different varieties, but they also had some yellowing leaves like you see here. I had to come in and pull some branches off and I don't know if I just over pruned them at some point. If they, they're not getting, they don't get as much um, water retention as the ones in the beds do. So I don't know if it was something like that, but there are, there are fruit on them or there is fruit on them. So it's a nice size fruit. Um, and we have some cherries over here. Um, but even these, they have like not all the blossoms getting fertilized, which is, or uh, pollinated, which is a little bit weird for a tomato. And then on the back side here, we have more marigolds just transplanting in, rogue tomatoes, blackberry or fig, zinnias, gorgeous. I tried to do the end of the bed with zinnias and flowers. There's marigolds. Here's the back of that trellis. 
These are our dahlia plants. Random tomato, because that's the story of my life. Um, and this huge volunteer tomato that I'm going to have to prune. I'll let it trellis over, or a uh, trail over, but I'm not trying to have it take over my bed again. Um, and then we also have, I'm super excited about these, pumpkins. So we I have them in fabric pots, but they are trailing along the ground. So I'm super excited to get pumpkins this year, maybe. Fingers crossed. We're also doing a perennial garden along the driveway. We're trying to. We've got more we have to plant. Um, so yeah, so that is this first bed. Um, and this patch here, literally thousands of tomato seedlings. You would not believe. I mean, just take a look. That's like six, seven, eight right there. There's a bunch more here. So my biggest, um, here's some blueberries too. My biggest rival in the garden this year has been grass and tomato seedlings. They're everywhere, it's, it's insane. So the other half of this trellis is also tomatoes and marigolds behind them. Um, nice sized fruit we're getting there. So we have Creole, Paul Robeson, uh, Dr. Witchies, bunch of different types of cherry tomatoes. I've got sweeties, um, blue cream, berry, blueberry cherries, um, and a few other kinds, I think. So over here, we've got basil, some squash. Again, these got stunted, so I'm just hoping they grow. Um, some tomatoes that I didn't have room to plant, so they're just dead. Um, more beans, a few cucumbers, but look how small they are. At this time last year, I was literally picking cucumbers. So um, I just checked my pictures before I did this to see how far behind they were. A bunch of grass back there. More basil. So we have a green variety and a purple variety. Um, these are a cantaloupe variety. And they do have flowers. So that's super exciting, but they're very tiny. So I don't know if we're going to actually get cucumbers or what, but that's okay. Or not cucumbers. Why do I keep saying that, guys? Um, get melons, uh, cantaloupes or not. I, they're either watermelons or cantaloupes. I had a bunch and a bunch died. Here's one of the squash that is definitely growing well. It's like a crazy, a lot of tendrils in there. It's like Medusa. Um, so just trying to get it to trellis. Um, another borage with these... Now you can get a close-up of the flower. They're really cool. I don't know if you can see it. There we go. Um, and then this, this is a yellow squash that I am trying to trellis. So I tried, I'm trying to just attach it to the trellis. Definitely not as easy as I would hope. Um, ugh, another rogue tomato. Look at this. I did not plant you. You will take over. Okay, this I am so excited about, you guys. Also... This basil is woody, but I'm not going to eat off of it, but um, it would be good actually for like drinks or just to keep bugs away. Um, this is a chickpea. <laughs> this is a chickpea plant. I've never grown a chickpea plant. I took a dried chickpea because we make batches of dried chickpeas in our Instapot and I put it in the ground and lo and behold, this beautiful plant. It is a gorgeous plant. Look at these leaves. They're so tiny and delicate and it gets these pretty little white flowers the chickpeas will grow as like a seed pod after the flower. So I'm just excited because it's like a little experiment that's actually going well. <laughs> so that's cool. Here are some peppers and I have a story about the peppers and a t huge patch of chamomile. This area is so fragrant. I have been cutting them, but we were away for five days and I have to come in there and just prune the crap out of it. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven peppers over here. I sent my husband, none of my peppers from seed grew. Um, so I sent my husband to, this one's getting eaten, to the uh, plant start place a few weeks ago. And I said, get six peppers. Because we didn't do well with bell peppers last year. I just wanted small yellow uh, sweet banana peppers. He came back with 17. <laughs> so this entire row behind is peppers. I'll show you. It's crazy. But I'm okay with it because I do love a good pepper. And while I'm over here, I should show you, first of all, our strawberries, um, which I picked a lot off of yesterday. Now that it's getting warmer, they're getting smaller. Their growth gets stunted. 
So they don't really like the 90s, which is what we've had, and very humid. But they might, they'll, they'll come back. They, they start producing again in the fall. This is a patch of wild strawberries from my yard that I just like threw in here because I wanted to see how they grow in comparison. So you can see the leaves are a lot smaller and the berries grow like this instead of like upside down like that drooping. So kind of cool. Um, also in here, this. This is a transplanted pepper that we overwintered from last year. It looked really dead when I put it in. It had no foliage. The leaves were this light green, but a lot of them, or the stems were light green. A lot of them were turning brown at the ends. So you can see it's got some dead parts, but what's left has grown um, leaves. And now I've got little baby peppers and there's so many of them. So these are bell peppers. There's a ton. There's like at least two dozen um, blossoms on here. So that means I'm going to get a lot more bell peppers than the little peppers if I had started them from seed. So transplanting, what is this? Oh, this is a pepper? Transplanting peppers, overwintering them. I'm definitely going to do that again. Um, all right, let's take a look at these peppers, this pepper alley over here. We also tried drip irrigation this time around. We don't use it too frequently, but um, if we're outside, we can hook it up fairly easily. So I do have this situated by a fence so that when they get bigger and they start to kind of droop, um, we can tie them off to the trellis. <sighs> so much grass in this area over here. It's difficult to get to, so can't really pull it from the root. Um, so we have banana peppers. Um, which I just pulled two off of here yesterday because I want the plants to get bigger. Hi, pup. What are you doing? <laughs> um, and then we have, let's see, I have tags here. Shishito peppers. Um, I've got a bunch on the other side. We've got Cubanelle. So, a little guy like that. That's what they'll look like. We've got um, Aruba peppers. I have no idea what these are, you guys. We're, and more shishitos, which are actually growing little, eh, little peppers. So that's exciting. Shishitos are, they sound like they would be hot, but they're not supposed to be very hot. They're supposed to be like, just like a little bit of a mild green pepper. You pick them green. So... On here, I on um, this side, here's this chamomile patch. That's just huge. I got to get in here. Oh, look, a cicada. We have cicadas like crazy out here, you guys. It is so loud on most days. Um, it's crazy because we're surrounded by woods. Just surrounded. So they are just loving every bit of the woods. And they are so loud on some mornings. Well, not just mornings, during the day. These are rutabagas. Something's eating them. Maybe a cicada, don't know. Whatever, this is an experiment. And I'm growing rutabagas. So that's cool. Nice root vegetable that's like a um, potato-ish type. There's another one. I was not expecting them to grow this well because I grew them from seed in the house and I should have just grown them right in the soil, but so far they are doing okay. The root is kind of out of the ground as opposed to in the ground. I'm not sure if that's normal, but whatever. Over here, a patch of onions I grew from seed. So these are exciting. Um, and I don't know when to pick them. So I will, I've got some red, and you can see the red onions got a red stalk. They start to turn red. Not sure when to pull them. I think I've read that when the top starts to brown that's when you pull I also have like grass in here that I don't think is an onion but it's hard to tell so I'm just leaving everything in <laughs> random tomato random tomato and then purposeful tomatoes so more tomatoes on this trellis look at those blossoms aren't they pretty I can get it to focus that's like a that's a big blossom then this flower here, which I never remember what it is, but it's gorgeous and I love it. So that is the garden. Over there, we do have two grapes. Um, 
I'm not sure if you can see them, but they are coming up. So we will be putting them onto the trellis soon because they're starting to send shoots out looking for something to trellis up. So this is the garden at this point. It's still um, not in its full swing, but I mean, just looking at all the greenery, all the stuff we're growing, it's pretty exciting. All right, so I've talked your ear off long enough. I know that was a long one, but I haven't done a video in so long. So that is what we have going on. Um, we poured our last concrete pad yesterday for our patio, which is up behind me up those stairs. So that is good. We've been uh, busting our butt trying to get stuff done. Um, this is that Thai plant twist I was telling you about. It's pretty cool. If anybody's looking for a solution, I recommend this one. It's easy to use. So that is that. Um, because I have not been able to post videos a lot, I do post on my Instagram. So if you're on Instagram, look up condo to cottage. And it's just a, a lot faster for me to post there. Um, so if you are on Instagram, go ahead and follow me there. Otherwise, send me pictures of your garden, send me videos. I cannot wait to see them. The cicadas heard me and now they're starting to chirp up. It sounds like a siren in the background. Um, I'd love to see your, your gardens this year, um, see how everybody's doing with the crazy weather we've had here in New Jersey. So, all right, everybody, I will talk to you soon.